Welcome back to Round Tire Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris Fisher. Next to me here is my 1964 Triumph TR4. If you've been keeping up with the channel at all, you know that I've spent about uh, over oh, the last year in several videos trying to put this floor in, the driver's side floor. I've been getting my butt kicked, frankly, but I want it to fit right and everything else. So I'm really taking my time and, and probably wasting some time, but that's okay. I found a gentleman on my favorite form who essentially has an entire rear clip of a Triumph TR4 that he's offering to cut up and sell before he takes it to the uh, junkyard. So I've reached out to him and I've asked him to see what he can do about essentially cutting the entire wing area around on both sides and uh, a couple pieces from the back that I need. And we're gonna see what he sends me. So until I get those pieces, I'm gonna wait on doing any other work on the floor. Who knows, depending on if, if these are in really good shape, I might clean them up and just cut out exactly what I've got and just weld these new pieces in. The, uh, the B post and all that stuff seems to be in, in good shape and fitting and everything like that. So I'll send him a couple pictures see what I've got so he knows what uh, what I'm looking for on both sides and we'll go from there. So I need something else to do and I think I'm gonna turn my focus to the motor. Thanks for watching. What you see here is my ultrasonic sink. You guys have uh, seen this before. What I've got inside here is the pedestal, the distributor pedestal. Pretty, uh, pretty beefy piece of metal there. And I've also got the breather tube for the motor because there's no uh, PCV valve or anything on this motor. So they just ex essentially exhausted the crankcase rooms right to the road. Pretty cool. So they're uh, relatively dirty. Get them in the ultrasonic sink. Now you can see I've got the ultrasonic sink is heating up. This is this 30 degrees, that's a Celsius here. That 30 degrees is what I'm heating it to. The 27 that's blinking, that's what it's at. And the blinking shows that it's heating. Going to go for about 15 minutes here. So you can kind of see, obviously I just took my hands in here, but the water is kind of moving by itself. So it's definitely heating it up. And I think you can hear that heater kicking in, boiling the, uh, or heating up the water that's right at the bottom there. Kind of sounds like a pot on your stove getting ready to kick over. But um, I've taken to heating up the bath because I've noticed that when I turn the ultrasonic sink on, this temperature goes up pretty rapidly and I, I don't think that the ultrasonic is heating it up really. I think it's affecting the temperature reading and it's throwing it off a little bit. So I've taken to heating up the bath first. So we'll go ahead and put this on 15 minutes. Like I said, you guys have seen this, you know it's pretty effective and we'll, uh, we'll get going with this. Got the motor here, as you can see on the uh, stand. I'm just gonna wheel it outside. I got a pressure washer out there, clean the hell out of it. The, um, I'm pretty confident in the health of the block I don't see a need to take it to a machine shop and get it checked and all that kind of stuff. There was machine work done on this thing, not the block itself, but on the motor. It's been rebuilt before, so maybe that's a fool's errand, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to call it good. So just get the gasket material off of it, get uh, get all the grease out of there, clean up the, the bores where the wet liners go. They're a little yucky, and, um, and just you know generally clean it up and degrease it, and then move into paint. So this is the paint that I'm going to use, Rust-Oleum Engine Primer and Enamel. A little bit of a uh, temperature withstand, can withstand some temperature there. I use this on the Spitfire, a couple coats of primer and a couple coats of the enamel. Pretty happy the way that stuff held up so far, so that I'm going to stick with that. You can also use the, uh, the Southern Polyurethanes. I could use their epoxy primer, but one, I don't have a compressor still with a, uh, with a gun that can uh, you know, withstand the amount of air that I need so this uh, engine enamel is is really my only other option and like I said I have been happy with it so that's uh, that's what I'm gonna go with got the engine block outside just on a piece of wood to prevent any you know major grease runoff into the ground obviously and uh, purple power zep version of it just go ahead get everything sprayed down inside and out So now I'll uh, light off the pressure washer here and go to town a little bit. I'm going to scrape some stuff off real quick. Then I've got some uh, some abrasive pads and just you know general cleaning stuff. On All right. Well, that didn't work out too bad. Quite a bit of deposits and everything from the water, around the water jackets 
I'll uh, get that the block flipped over here and I'll kind of show you that. I'm also going to uh, get the compressor out here that my my little pancake compressor that is about worthless but just to try to blow a lot of this water off because I don't want it to sit on here and start rusting. So the motor is mostly clean here. I got uh, a lot of the gasket material and stuff off and really with the with the gasket material I prefer to use like a plastic razor blade but it doesn't always work. So as long you, know, you can use a metal razor blade, a lot of people say, hey, don't ever use metal razor blades to get your gasket stuff off. You know, for critical surfaces like the head, sure, you don't want to gouge it, but the uh, as long as you keep the blade as flat to the surface as possible, you know, you angle it up like this, you want it as perpendicular as possible and just, you know, lightly spread it and, and, and bring it across. But I'll show you here how nasty the inside is with all the water corrosion and everything and, and the concerns that I have with that. A little difficult to show you here because of the light, but... These uh, machine surfaces, you can see they look like a, a figure eight. That's that's the figure eight gasket's gone there, and that's where the cylinder sleeves slide into. If you look right there, it's a nice clean circle, and then right at the top of that circle, it gets all gunked up. So there's a lot of deposits, a lot of metal corrosion and everything in here that's deposited itself in there. And I'm afraid that as I try to put the motor back together, I'm not gonna get my cylinders to sit really all that well. And uh, so I've got some concern for that. I don't know if that stuff's going to come off easily or not. I haven't tried to mess with it at all. But I think I'm just going to take a, a screwdriver or, or a uh, orange stick and see if I can break some of that corrosion away. I don't believe that's really corrosion from the block. It's just wear products and everything that has been in the coolant and it's a low flow area there and just deposited itself. And you can see in the front near the water pump, number one cylinder, there's very little corrosion that's deposited itself. And as you make your way back through the motor, it gets a little bit worse and worse just because I don't think the flow rates back here are that much. And it sits and the stuff precipitates out. And uh, there you go. So we'll see if I can clean this up. This might be reason to get it hot tanked and, uh, and inspect it a little bit more for this, for this corrosion. As you can probably see there, I'm getting some surface rust forming on the uh, surfaces that I just cleaned. Obviously, that's expected. Block still still some uh, wet spots and areas which I'm not that concerned with. I did try to blow out the, the bolt holes and stuff. I don't want water to really sit in there. So now what I'll do is I'll go through and flip it over. See, investigating uh, getting this the, the water deposits, the corrosion deposits out of the water jackets like I showed you. Now, unfortunately, the camera angle is not the best here and the lighting's kind of tough. But we're going to go ahead and just kind of poke around in there. Now, that is a, is a seating surface there, so I don't want to, you know, beat the heck out of it. Get in trouble. Let's see what we can do here. Just gonna lightly tap. Yeah. Just break some of this corrosion off. All right. Well, it seems to be working okay. So hopefully, uh, we'll just continue this along. Take some uh, all sorts of stuff. Try to just knock all this stuff off again. It's it's hard to see in here. And I obviously don't want to mar the seating surface, but I'm going to have a little bit of play because, again, they are gasketed. So I'll go ahead and just continue on with this, get it cleaned up as well as I can, and uh, I'll come back here in a little bit. I'm not going to bore you with me tapping metal. Well, I was able to get the seating surfaces for those figure eight gaskets cleaned up pretty well. Got all the heavy-duty corrosion out of there. I did, uh, I did do some marking on that seating surface there, but most of those marks you see are, are not from me. They were already there, the corrosion left them. So hopefully that's, uh, I didn't screw that up. And then I went around in every place where there was gaskets or something, you can see that reddish tinge there, that's uh, lube oil for, the, uh, for putting the motor together. So I put that stuff down, uh, down in the main bearings and, and any place else, the camshaft bearings, all that kind of stuff, and just kind of lathered it all up. But, uh, but then I found a problem. So if you want to take the wind out of the sails of a, a, a restoration, you find a crack in your block. Uh, there it is right there. You can see coming from the bolt hole across and into the block. So you got that little thing. I don't see really where it penetrates too far down into the threads. But on the other side, again, I'm not sure how well this is going to show up, but it extends down oh, about a half an inch or so. So that's uh, that's a big bummer. I uh, did have on the Spitfire, I did have the head was cracked a little bit. And what they did essentially was drill holes in here and then to stop the crack and then had like little plugs that they put in with resin and screwed them in. I'm not sure if that's something that can be done here. I've never had to, to investigate block repairs or anything like that. But obviously this needs to now go to a professional and have them assess that. And then might as well get all everything else checked. 
obviously if I got one crack. The big bummer here though is that this is a uh, original block to the car per the heritage certificate, so who knows, maybe I need to shop for a new TR4 block. Thanks again for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers.